Welcome to the Ocean International Community Church. And if you got your Bibles, take them out, turn to the book of Matthew. This morning we're starting a new sermon series titled Money Matters. Money Matters. Okay? Look at your neighbor, say money matters. Money matters. Say your money matters. Say your money matters. Say my money matters. We hope that you'll say that at the end of this service, in Jesus' name. We're praying for unity throughout this week, uh, even after this morning, because some of you may leave here a little disappointed in me, upset with me, because I'm getting in the middle of your world. But uh, I think we need to do that. I think one of the areas where we are struggling as a church, how many of you know churches have struggles? I mean, you know, churches have struggles. We're, we're pulling off the blankets and we're getting deep down into the heart of the matter. And we need to do that sometimes. Somebody say amen. amen. Sometimes we got to work hard. And uh, that's the next few weeks we're going to be working hard on us. Somebody say amen. amen. One of the areas of our church that we struggle in is, is financially. Okay. And, and I, y- you guys know me well enough to know I'm a straight shooter. We have been watching our church, and we have been experiencing some incredible numerical growth in the last couple of years. We thank God for that. Somebody say amen. Amen. That means souls are being saved, lives are being changed, the kingdom is growing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our church is growing numerically, and we see this upward trend, and we praise God for that. But what's happening with our finances is they're doing this. So as the church is growing, the finances have plateaued. But how many know when the church grows... It requires more ministry. When the church grows, it requires more ministry. We have to add a third service, which means we got to pay more rent, which means we got to have more ministry, which means we got to have more equipment, and we got to have more people, and, and we got to offer more connect groups. So we got to budget increases. Praise God. Somebody say amen. amen. Budget increases. But income is not increasing. Speaks to a couple of things. Some we can control, some we can't control. But I also know many of our families are struggling. Many of you as individuals are struggling. I know your stories. I hear them. I pray for you. And some of our issues in our lives are money matters. They're money matters. Just somebody say amen. Amen. I know you don't want to, but I'm going to make you. Money matters. And for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about money matters. We're going to talk about money matters. Because as followers of Jesus, we love to sing the song, I surrender all, except for our money. We'll sing it. We'll raise our hands, but we won't do it. It sounds really good but it's really hard to do. Are you with me? Are you following me? Tuba (laughs) Pomoja. We are together. (laughs) Trust me. We can sing it. We can shout it. We can celebrate it on Sunday morning, but it's hard to live out. And one of the hardest areas for people to surrender is their wallet. But the reality is the next few weeks, we're going to see what Scripture says, and, and the best thing we can do as followers of Jesus is to do that. It's to truly surrender. When it comes to money, it's important that we begin at the right place. It's important when we begin to talk about finances as followers of Jesus that we all begin at the right place. How many of you know if you want to go from point A to point B, it's important where you start? Everybody's got to be at point A. If you start at the wrong place, you're going to end up at the wrong place. If we start at the wrong place, we're going to end up at the wrong place. So the goal this morning is to get all of us to point A. And I will tell you this morning is going to be the easiest message in the whole series. Somebody say amen. So everybody just exhale. Oh, geez. It's going to be an easy morning. We're just going to set some ground rules. We're going to set some boundaries. And we're going to look at some things as we push forward for the next four weeks. This morning is going to be real simple. But it's important that as we follow Jesus and we begin to talk about finances, that we start at the right place. 
that we have an understanding, a common understanding of what it means to follow Jesus and what our finances mean when we become followers of Christ. Okay, It's important that we understand this. It's important that we understand who we are, but it's also important to understand who he is. We've got to understand our role, but we also have to understand his role. Because Jesus has a role in your finances. I used to hear it preached all the time. He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Quiet. He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. And so when it comes to following Jesus, when it comes to our finances, there's one verse in Scripture that I believe sums up everything we need to understand in order to achieve what God wants us to achieve. And it's found in Psalm 24, verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. And it says this. It says, The earth is the Lord's, and everything. Say everything. everything. Say everything. everything. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it. Every Thing in it, the world and all who live in it. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. As hard as it is for us to comprehend, the truth is this morning, we don't own anything. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't own it. You don't own it. You don't own anything. I don't own anything. We don't own it. Pastor Jimmy, you don't even know. I've been working for years. That's my car. That's my Benz. That's my Maserati. That's my three-story on the beach. You don't even know. That's mine. I got news for you, folks. One day, somebody else is going to be driving your Benz. Somebody else is going to be sitting behind the driving, the driving wheel of your Maserati. And whether you like it or not, somebody else is going to be living in your house one day. Soak it up. It's a reality. And one day, that shilling that's in your pocket is going to be in somebody else's pocket. That dollar bill that's in your wallet is going to be in somebody's wa- somebody else's wallet. But guess what? It was in somebody else's before it was yours. Let it soak in a minute. We don't own anything. It's all temporary. From day one, that's been the plan. From the very beginning of man, it was always the plan. If you don't believe me, take your Bibles this morning. I want to take you to the beginning. And I want to share with you a short story of how it all began and what it was supposed to look like in the beginning. We don't own anything. We've simply been called to steward what God has given us. That definition of a steward is this. It it is a person who manages another person's property or finances. So Pastor Jimmy, that's mine. Well, no, it's not. Go back to Psalm 24. Everything belongs to the Lord. We don't own anything. (laughs) This is where we have to start. We don't own anything. We start here. We're all called to be stewards. A person who organizes or who is in charge of a supervisor or a manager. You say, well, I worked all my life, Pastor Jimmy. You don't understand. I own that. I bought that. I saved up for that, and I bought that with my own money. Well, that sounds really great. But it's not true. We don't own anything. We were never called to own anything. This is how I know. Genesis 
chapter 2, verse 15. It says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. But nowhere does it say that he put him in the Garden of Eden to own it. To work it and to take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, if you are free, it says, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. Any tree. It's the garden. There's lots of trees. You can eat from anything here you want to, except one. Do not eat from the, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will surely die. You can eat everything you want except one thing. And what happens? Woman shows up <laughs> and leads that poor man astray. <laughs> it is proof, ladies, that the woman is stronger than the man. Because you boys know women can make us do anything. It's true. Just say yes. <laughs> just say yes. You don't have to look at her. Just say yes. <laughs> it's true. What Adam and Eve do? They ate from the one thing they were told not to. They could eat everything they wanted to except one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing. one thing. And what's the one thing they go eat? The thing they're told not to. And since that day, there has been a tug of war between God and man to figure out who's smartest. And it's happening in this room right now. Because some of you are trying so hard to tune out what I'm about to say because you don't want to hear it. You just want to hold on to it. I'm not going to ask you for your money today. Somebody say amen. amen. But God is. You know why? Because it's not yours. Follow me now. We're just getting started. It's not yours. He never told Adam and Eve they would own it. He simply said, take care of it. Take care of it. Steward it. But yet somewhere in the garden, they began to listen to the wrong voice. They begin to follow the wrong voice. How many times in our lives do we follow the wrong voice and it gets us in trouble? Oh, come on now. Come on. The truth of the matter is today, everyone who follows Jesus, everyone in this room, we desire to be blessed. How many of us want to be blessed? It's the best response I've had all day. <laughs> we all want to be blessed. The truth this morning is, and you've heard me say it before, but it bears repeating, is that God's blessings only come inside of God's boundaries. The minute that Adam and Eve stepped outside the boundaries and ate of the one thing they were told not to was the day that we became cursed. Why? Because walking outside of God's set boundaries removes the blessing and invites the curse. And some of you this morning, you're walking in curse because you refuse to live inside of God's boundaries when it comes to your finances. That's a reality. We, we want to know why we're always broke. We're broke because we're broke. <laughs> We've been listening to the wrong voice. And God's blessings only come inside of his boundaries, but, but we want to walk outside those boundaries and expect God to bless us. And the kingdom doesn't work that way. 
God's blessings only come from within his boundaries. And, and this principle is so hard to understand. It's easy to understand when it doesn't cost us anything. But the moment it begins to cost us something or we have to begin to sacrifice something, we would rather lean into our own personal preference, our own personal opinion, than we would the principles that God lays down in his word. But I can tell you this morning that kingdom principles are always greater than personal preference. That's good preaching and you're missing it. Kingdom principles will always be better than personal preference. It was personal preference that got Adam and Eve in trouble. But I want to eat that fruit I'm not supposed to eat. That's my preference, Lord. I know you said this, but it's my preference. It's what I want to do. It's what I want. You guys know, some of you have lived this out in your dating lives. Turned out really bad. <laughs> I know he's not good for me, Lord, but I like him. <laughs> he's a dream. Till he becomes a nightmare. <laughs> we walk outside of those boundaries. And he's no longer a blessing, he's a curse. She's no longer the one. She's the one you want to get rid of. God's blessings always come inside of his boundaries. So we want to be blessed, but we want to do what we want to do. So one of, if not the biggest struggle when it comes to following Jesus is money. For the next few weeks, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about what it looks like. We're going to talk about what the Bible says about our finances. And I believe we'll learn some principles that if we're willing to apply them to our lives, they will change our lives, they will change the life of the church, and they have the potential to change the world. I said they have the potential to change the world. but we have to apply them to our lives. Another truth today is this, is that money mattered to Jesus. Why should money matter to us? Because money mattered to Jesus. In fact, of all of his teachings, of all of his parables, the, the 36, 38, however many you want to count, somewhere in that range, at least 16 of them had to deal with with finances. Almost half of all the teachings of Jesus had to do with money. How many of you want to go to that church? Three of you? It's true, though. It's true. Why? Because Jesus understood something about people, and he understood something about money. And he understood that one of the greatest things that we as humans struggle with is greed. And greed keeps us from walking in right relationship with Jesus. Jesus began to preach about money. But why? So much. I, I believe the reason why can be found in Matthew chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, turn there. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read verses 19 through 21. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. I believe this is the reason why Jesus spent so much time teaching on money. He said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Well, that'll preach right there. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, and th this is the anchor right here. Are you ready? This is the anchor. This is the word of God. This is not the word of Jimmy. 
This is the word of God that you need to hear and understand. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is not a preference. This is not an opinion. This is the word of God. We sang about the word of God earlier. Remember that? Speak through your word. You had no idea what you were singing. But you had no idea you were going to read this this morning. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Money is a matter of the heart. Money is a matter of the heart. So we need to be willing to ask ourselves this morning this one simple question. Where do we spend our money? Where does our money go? We have to learn to test where we invest. You got to test where you invest. You got to take inventory and see where your money goes. Sit down and write a list of where all your money goes every month. And then ask yourself, is this a treasure or is this pleasure? Are the places that I'm giving my money to, are they more about my temporary pleasure or am I investing in kingdom treasure? Because the reality is this, church, is that our pleasure is not always treasure. Many times it becomes trash. How many things do we spend money on that have no eternal significance and are so temporary? But we want it so bad, and a year later, it's so gone. Our pleasure is not always treasure. Test where we invest. Are, are we throwing money away? Are we spending it foolishly? Are we using money for our temporary pleasure? What are we doing with our money? Why do we have to ask ourselves that question? Because money matters. Money matters. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We give where we live. We give where we live. Do you live in the kingdom of God? Or do you just visit it from time to time? We give where we live. Does the Lord truly have your heart? If, if you turn just a few pages over to Matthew 22, verse 37. As Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Everybody say, all your heart. All your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. To love the Lord your God with all your heart. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Love the Lord with all your heart. If you bring those two together, you know what that says to me? Love the Lord with all your treasure. Love the Lord with all your treasure. Love the Lord 
with all your treasure. So we have the boldness to go before the Lord and ask him for all of his treasure. Lord, give me all the blessing you can. We even raised our hands earlier. I want to be blessed. Give it to me, Lord. But when the Lord says give it back, what do we do? When it comes time to ask, this is easy. But when it's time to give, uh uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm preaching louder than you're shouting this morning. Money matters. Money's a matter of the heart. Money is a matter of the heart. Does the Lord have your heart? Does the Lord have our hearts? Does the Lord have the heart of the ocean this morning? That's the question. Because we all agree that we want God to move in our church. We all agree that we want God to do great things. We we all agree that we have needs and they're very, very visible and very evident from Sunday to Sunday. We have needs as a church. But we're struggling for those needs to be met. And I don't believe it's God's fault. I believe God doesn't have our hearts yet. Pastor Jimmy, you can't be judging me. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you the truth. Telling you the truth because there's nobody in this room who wants God's will for this church more than I do. I love my church, but I love it enough to be honest as we leave. Fair? fair we have work to do does God have our hearts does God have our hearts some takeaways real quick this morning that I need you to write down type in whatever things I want you to think about this week while you're at home okay or when you show up for prayer when you show up for prayer when you show up for prayer and don't be saying amen if you ain't coming I got video cameras. I'm taking notes every day who's coming in and who's going out. Not really. (laughs) That you know of. Anyway, takeaways for today, okay? We don't own anything. We have to start there. If we will get this into our spirit and understand we don't own it, then we won't fight so hard to hold on to it. If we realize that it all belongs to God, it's easier to give it back to him. And if you don't, you're stealing it. We'll read that in scripture very soon. We'll read that in scripture very soon. That if we don't give it back to him, we're robbing him. We don't own anything. Number two, God's blessings always come inside of God's boundaries. Stop walking outside the boundaries that God has given us and asking him to bless you. He won't do it. Look at your neighbor say, he won't do it. He won't do it. God's not going to bless you outside of his boundaries. The kingdom doesn't work that way. Why? Because God knows inside of the boundaries, you are more free than you are outside of the boundaries. 
There is more freedom inside the boundaries of God than there are outside the boundaries of God. You begin to walk outside of God, God's boundaries, you, you become captive to sin. You become captive to the things of this world, and they will hold you prisoner. The things of this world will hold you prisoner. I said it before, you know it. Sin will take you further than you ever wanted to go, keep you longer than you ever wanted to stay, and cost you more than you ever wanted to spend. When we walk outside of God's boundaries, we become captive. But when we live inside of God's boundaries, we are free. Why? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Spirit of God exists inside the boundaries of God. We are more free inside the boundaries than we are outside. God's blessings always come inside of his boundaries. Number three, kingdom principles are always greater than your personal preference. Kingdom principles matter more than your personal preference. So, Pastor Jimmy, you don't have the right to tell me what I need to do with my money. You're right. I he does. But it's not your money. We struggle with that. We struggle with that. Look at your neighbor and say, stop struggling. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Stop struggling. The struggle doesn't have to be real. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Kingdom principles are always better than our personal preferences. They are. You got to test where you invest. Test where you invest. Take notes. Am I really spending my money where I think I'm spending my money? We, you know, we think we give a lot. Sometimes we think we give more than we really give. We got to test where we invest. We, we got to understand that pleasure isn't always treasure. That where we give is truly where we live. And the last one is this, is that money is a matter of the heart. And if God truly has our heart, then he will surely have our money. Does the Lord have our heart? Next week, it's going to be awesome. Money is a matter of obedience. <laughs> obedience. Everybody say obedience. Next week, we're going to talk about money being a matter of obedience. The week after that, we're going to talk about money being a matter of generosity. And after that, we're going to talk about money being a matter of worship. Obedience, generosity, and worship. All of those things come into play when we talk about our finances. And I believe if we'll take what we learn these next few weeks, God will change our lives, will change our church, can change our city, can change our nation, and can change the world. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen with me. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Anybody mad this morning? Raise your hand. If you don't like what I said and you're mad, raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you right now. <laughs> that the spirit of joy will come over you. Why don't we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. We thank you that you love us so much, Lord, that you allow us to steward your creation. You trust us enough, Lord, to say, I've created all of this, now you manage it. What an honor, Lord, to be trusted by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But Father, I pray today that you would help us to be real about how we are doing with what you've given us. Are we truly surrendering our hearts to you, thereby surrendering everything we have to you? Do you truly have our heart? God, let us test where we invest this week. Let us take inventory, Lord. Let us look at our attitude. Let us look at our lives and see if you really have our heart. And God, if, if you don't, Holy Spirit, would you come and reveal 
those areas in our life that we really need to surrender, would you take the blindfolders off of our eyes and the earplugs out of our ears so that we can truly hear what you have to say to us about our money? Because our money matters. Lord, help us. We want to be a church that does your will. We want to be a church that honors and pleases you. We want to be a church that brings you glory. So, Lord, would you reveal to us, even this week in our time of prayer, in our time of devotion, Lord, reveal to us those things you want us to see. Father, I pray for the church today. Bless us, Lord. This week, as we pray and we fast, would you prepare us so that you can do what you want to do in our lives. Build an expectancy in us, Lord, for more of you. Father, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.